What's up, Yang Gang? Oh my word. Yesterday, you hear little Yang Gang in the bathroom. So yesterday was absolutely huge for the universal basic income movement and for the freedom dividend in and of itself because I'm gonna tell y'all, most of the people who were there were absolutely Yang Gang. And the and ones that weren't? Were definitely Yang Gang yeah. by the end of it, <laughs> for sure. There was some really crazy stuff going on. If y'all saw during the live stream, like some, the, you know, one of the, the security guys had to like, you know, forcefully like restrain this dude and like run him off or whatever. That was crazy. And then uh, JFK, who was running for, oh, JFK, for <laughs> Movement that is why, see, I wasn't, I wasn't standing in front of the stage at that time and everybody's chanting JFK and like... And people in the chat were like, what, what the hell is JFK got to do with I anything? know, me and uh, Ari were like, JFK for UBI or something? Yeah, we were all confused about that until we figured it out because I, I later saw his initials and... Yeah. Initials JFK. Now he seemed pretty cool and he's, you know, he's, he's in New York. So if you're in New York, definitely support JFK. Um, Scott Sands was there. Pleasure meeting Scott. And one thing that we need to get to, this math super pack. Math super pack. Is that what it is? Math super pack or math pack? Yeah. Tell everybody like the mechanics behind that. So a super pack or pack is when people get together and they're raising money for a candidate that they choose, but they are not affiliated with the campaign. So they can raise unlimited amounts of money, but they're still it's still not tied to the campaign. They can say, yes, this is for Andrew Yang, but Andrew Yang and the PAC are separate. Like, neither one influences the other, if that makes sense. Right, and, and he can't really say, no, don't do it. Yeah, because they can do it anyways. He can disavow all he wants, and that's just going to, it's not going to change anything. Now, let me explain the way this game works to y'all. Okay, here's the thing. All these, these other candidates, right, that's got these packs and stuff, this is what Andrew Yang is trying to get out of all of this, right? But the only way that you're going to beat them is to join them for the moment. Okay. And get yourself elected. Andrew Yang doesn't have as much MSM support, so he's got to he's got to get the money where he can get it because he's got to be able to advertise. It's more important that Andrew Yang wins than Andrew Yang disavowing super PACs. Right. And here's the thing: if we got some wealthy Yang gang out there, hell yeah, we need y'all's dollars. We well, need you to support Andrew Yang. And here's the thing. All of these donors of this math pack know exactly who Andrew Yang is and what he stands for. They know that once he's elected, there will be no more packs. Okay? They, they're going into this realizing this. So it's not like that they're donating for their own good. They're donating to help get the money out. They're putting their money together so that we can get the money out. And that's what we need to do. To be. I'm going to talk to y'all wrestling fans out here real quick. Ric Flair said, to be the man, you got to beat the man. Woo! So, Yang Gang, we got to have them dollars. And speaking of yep. dollars, we need to raise them. We got we got a couple days left to hit that $1.5 million donation level. And you see how tough it is for us. We're the broke folk folks. We need some wealthy Yang Gang. They've already donated. There's a lot of wealthy Yang Gang that have already donated their limit. So, we need this pack. Whether we like it or not, we need it. No doubt. And and because we are the broke folk folk, y'all, I encourage you. I know it's tough. Take 20 more dollars out of your pocket and donate to the campaign. Because the only way that we're going to get this boot off of our throat is to get Andrew into office. And the most important thing, besides donating, is getting out there and voting. You better be registered as a Democrat if your state requires it, and you better get to the polls. That is very, very important. Y'all, this is no take backs. We, this is our shot. This is our moment in history. If there was one thing that I saw, get your turkey leg ready, mom. 
If there was one thing that I saw yesterday, it was that there was a movement for humanity. And and it was so it was almost so overwhelming to see just the the love that the people have for everybody else around them. And it's catching fire because most of us just want our neighbors to do better. We don't care about anything else. Y'all, we all just want to get along. We're all in this together. All right. Nice. That's all I can find. Sure. <laughs> so, Math Pack, I'm not worried about it. You know, whether he did some or not, I don't care. We need that money. We need the, you know, these I mean, guys. look what Steyer did with how many millions of dollars of his own money. But that's, that's okay because he's a billionaire. But it's not okay to take a pack. Exactly. Steyer bought his way into the election or bought his way into the to the debate and is is already qualified for the next one, has he not? In December, yeah. No, except for individual donors. Except for ind- individual donors, but he does, he already has the polling requirements for December and he just entered the race. Now imagine if Andrew Yang, when he just entered the race, had billions of dollars. Yeah. We need it, y'all. Yeah. Yeah. We gotta have it. Too. And we already go into it realizing that it's all that stuff is going to go away once Andrew Yang is elected president. They already know that. That's why we're doing this. That's why these these more wealthy people are trying to get together to get Andrew Yang elected president because they see exactly what this is doing to our political system. It's time to get the money out, y'all. We got to get the money out, and if we got to use the money to get the money out, then that's what we got to do. Logic. <laughs> Shout out to our new executive producer, Michael. Michael Thank you so much. Thank you. Your name will be at the end of just about every video. Some of them, you know, like live streams and stuff, they upload without the ending. So, So Michael, shout outs to you, but shout outs to our other Patreons as well. Thank you. Y'all, we would love to get this up to a freedom dividend, at least for us. That would be awesome. And y'all are making it happen. And y'all are making it happen. Y'all are making this channel happen. Like if it wasn't for y'all, we wouldn't be doing. We wouldn't be marching for UBI or on the streets talking about Andrew Yang. It or we wouldn't be able to get on CNN. We wouldn't be able to get in the New York Times. We wouldn't be able to get in all the other publications that we've gotten on, or you know, the Majority Report, or the Kyle Kalinsky Show. Gang Gang, it's because y'all support this channel that we are able to put ourselves out there. You know, we have to we have to literally put ourselves out there to get that kind of interaction. And the only way that we can do that is through y'all's love and support. And it's been amazing to me to see the outpouring that this channel has gotten. And I have a feeling it's because a lot of us out there are the broke folk folks. And that transcends you know, party lines that transcends, you know, race that transcends. And we all realize that we're in this together. And we have an opportunity right now. <laughs> we have an opportunity right now to change history. So thank you, Yang Gang. We love you and we appreciate you. And it was so awesome yesterday meeting all of y'all. Oh, was, oh was my so word. Great. In the live stream, when I said it's weird when people come up and recognize me, it's a weird good. Like, I love it. I'm just like, I guess, amazed that people recognize me from somewhere and know who I am. I'm used to being like an introverted, shut in type person. <laughs> That's because okay. you're a weird uh, INTJ, like Andrew Yang. I don't know what I am. I, I can't remember. You're E. E. Amazing. I think. I don't know. Hold on. I think that's what you are. I don't know what that was. Extra science is called, but whatever. Yeah, you're an extrovert, yeah, for sure. It was awesome meeting all the Yang Gang out there. I mean, we weren't even out of the car, and the first person that walked by with a math hat recognized who we were. And 
it's only because y'all make this happen. And so we love you. We thank you, Yang Gang. Can't wait to meet more of you. Can't wait to meet more of you. You took a lot of pictures. If y'all want to follow us on Twitter, it's at Bbox Reality and at Crystal's Lady. Those are down at the bottom of the description too. All the links you need. Y'all make sure to like, share, and subscribe to these videos. Ding that bell because that bell is the only way that you get the notification when we do go live. And it's the only way that you're going to know when we put out a new video unless you come back frequently to the channel. So, which we encourage you to do. All of our donation links are in the description. Yang Gang, y'all see these bracelets? So say Yang Gang and Matt. We're going to put a link to these in the description. Uh, I think all of these, all the sales for these go to the campaign. It either goes straight to the campaign or goes to help the campaign, like truck wraps, anything that's going to bring Angie Yang a lot of attention. They're only $5 a piece. If you got five four, you get one free. And it's a great way to you know, show off your support. You can hand them out at events. You can hand them out on the streets. Good stuff. Great way to spread the word of the Yang Gang. Thank you so much, Yang Gang. We love you. Enjoy our boy Scott. Now, we're going to bring up Scott Santons, but what we're going to do is bring him in with that chant we invented right here in the Bronx. $1,000 a month. 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 All right, thank you. Let's go, Scott. Right, gang, gang. All right, so today I just want to uh, kind of play off of what most people here know as the seven stages of Yang. Yeah. And so uh, when a lot of people, they first hear about base income and they through a, heard it through Yang, uh, you can go through these stages. And so for me, Let's go through the seven stages of basic income and kind of the way that, that I experienced it in my own experience. Since stage one, stage one for me was technology. And I know that's the same stage for a lot of people, it's how a lot of people are introduced to it. For me, I grew up uh, in like a science fiction household. I grew up wanting Star Trek, that made sense to me. I grew up thinking that technology should advance and actually leave all of us better off. And yet, I've watched my entire lifetime and technology has not been increasing everybody's lives and enhancing everybody's lives. It's been enhancing a few people's lives. And it's amazing, this chart that I, uh, hopefully a lot of you are familiar with called the Great Decoupling. And Carl mentioned this too, how productivity has more than doubled. Like my entire lifetime, we're now twice as productive, but we're not working less. Who's benefiting from this? <laughs> right, Jeff Bezos, yeah. The billionaires, the millionaires, they're benefiting. And I read this book called Nana by Marshall Brain, and that was kind of my big entry. Because he framed this, he was very clear that the way we're going is towards dystopia. As technology advances, and if we do not make the right decisions along the way, dystopia lies that direction. But we can use technology to actually create a utopia, which should not be a bad word. It's weird how it became a bad word. You know, Robert Kennedy's, he said, that many people look at the world and ask why. And he looked at the world, how it could be, and asked why not. And that's kind of where I came from. Just why can't we use technology to improve our lives? So I read this book called Manna, and the author, after explaining you know, how much better things could be, he introduced the a concept of basic income to me. So I started looking into it. So, stage two, for me, was the history of basic income. I was amazed to learn that we were so close. 
in the 70s that Nixon himself proposed a guaranteed income for families. And it passed the House of Representatives twice in 70 and 71. We were so close. We did experiments all over the country. In the U.S., we had cities, Seattle and Denver had them. Other cities across the country experimented with negative income tax. Martin Luther King was for it. Milton Friedman was for it. But imagine that, this not left, not right. It's forward. Like, these are ideas. This idea was something that was really considered. And we experimented not only in the U.S., we experimented in Canada. They experimented. They essentially eliminated poverty for five years in Dauphin, Manitoba. And we experimented in other places, too. And it was amazing to me to, like, read through this history. And it was just kind of an unknown history to me. And then that led me to stage three. Stage three being evidence. That's what I really care about. I want to know, does something work? I'm not going to just support something because it sounds good. I really care about if it works. I'm not ideological that way. And sure enough, if you look into the evidence, it works. What we learned from the 70s and the, the experiments then was that People didn't stop working when they got a basic income. In fact, they started working in ways that were more valuable to them. Like one of the biggest effects was that you essentially used it as, as paid maternity leave for new mothers. But it's amazing to me that we still don't even have paid maternity leave. But they were able to use it as that. People were able to actually work less overtime they were able, students were able to actually focus on going back to school. That's the kind of work that we should want. And the evidence too, we saw that hospitalization rates decreased. In Canada, when they eliminated poverty in Dauphin for five years, hospital utilization rates went down almost 10%. In Namibia, in the UBI pilot, crime decreased over 40%. Wow. In India, you saw that the villages that had a basic income were three times as likely to be self-employed than control villages that didn't. So you look at all this evidence and it's just impossible to deny that, yeah, this works. The next step for me, the next stage, was philosophy. And fortunately for me, my entry point was Carl Weiderquist. So apparently, you know, we both lived in New Orleans. We didn't know that. I signed up for US Big. And he was just so excited that somebody was actually into basic income in New Orleans. <laughs> and he gave me a book. His book being The Power to Say No. Freedom is the Power to Say No. And after I read that book, really that like just completely, really solidified my views of basic income philosophically. Because, I mean, these things go back and he explained it as well as far as the power to say no and how important that is. And he, he himself was actually uh, influenced by Thomas Paine. And Thomas Paine, I mean, this is a hundred years old argument. Thomas Paine's argument was based on the fact that no one created the earth and that it was a right, not a charity, that he was fighting for with his plan. A right not a charity. Why? Because no one created the earth. And when you think about the philosophy too, freedom requires non-domination. Non-domination requires an empowered and protected status. Freedom and liberty, these things just don't happen. They don't just exist. We actually have to create them together. That's If you look at the Constitution and the preamble, I see that as essentially writing for why a basic income. It goes back that far. Now the next stage for me, it was actually to Diane Pagin. She gave this presentation about TANF at my first basic income guarantee congress that I went to here in New York back in 2015. And the thing is, I assumed, even after looking at basic income, I assumed that the safety net worked in a way that you think that it should work. It doesn't. It absolutely doesn't. It just enraged me 
to learn, especially just the details of TANF. TANF, for those who don't know, is Temporary Assistance for Needy Families. It's a block grant. And in the state of Louisiana, for every 100 families in poverty, four are receiving TANF. If you look at SNAP, which is our, our best program, the food stamps that you get essentially last for around, on average, three weeks of every month. You can get them for three months, then it expires. And you can get that every three years. So, if you think that SNAP exists for everybody and you can just get it, no. If you look at disability, for every five people with a disability in this country, one person is receiving disability assistance. So if you look at our safety net, that's really, it's exactly what it is. It's just a net full of holes that people fall through. Right now, 13 million people in poverty are entirely disconnected from this federal safety net entirely. They're getting nothing. So that was a big one for me, was learning about that, and I think it's important that people understand just how much of a failure our existing safety net is. The next stage for me was learning through my own experience what basic income is. For those who don't know, I crowdfunded my own basic income, and I've been living with $1,000 per month as my floor every month since January of 2016. Along the way, I learned that this is about security, and it's a word that you don't really understand until you feel it. Like, I had no idea what security felt like until I had it. So when people think about basic income, it's not mainly about the money. It's about the unconditionality of the money. It's that you know that every month you will start with this amount that you can plan on and you know it's going to be there. And that feeling of security is just life-changing. And the other thing I learned too, besides the importance of unconditionality, is that it enables and empowers us to pursue what is most important to us. And that's what I've been doing. That's why I'm here. The only, the only reason I'm up here at all, the only reason any of you know my name, is because I'm able to actually pursue what I think is important. And that's what I've been pushing for for years, is basic income that's important to me. I have that ability, and I want everyone to have that ability, too, to pursue what's most important to them. So stage seven of basic income for me, final stage, was where I am now. And I just think that the world is upside down and backwards. Where, let's say somebody says, oh, basic income, won't people stop working? And I immediately think, how much work is not getting done right now? Right. Because we don't have a basic income. Preach, brother. People say, oh, basic income. Isn't that too expensive? Can we afford a basic income? And I think, how much will basic income save? How much does it cost to not have a basic income? That's what's really expensive. And so I think now very differently about a lot of things. And I think that Martin Luther King was absolutely right when he described poverty as akin to cannibalism. I think that decades from now, we're going to look back and we're going to think of our lack of basic income as essentially the same thing as eating each other for survival. There's no reason to do it. We don't have to do it. It's a choice. It's a choice that we as a society make together. And this choice... This choice that we make, it's, it's something society, society teaches us that poverty is a moral failure of the individual. And in 
doing so, it keeps us from understanding that society is a failure, more, sorry, poverty is a failure of society itself. That is what it is. It's an absolute moral failure of society. And so when you think about what is basic income, UBI is not free money. UBI is freedom. UBI is power. UBI is trust. UBI is our natural inheritance. What we, it's our share of the earth. UBI is our technological inheritance. UBI is our just compensation for our data. Mm -hmm. It's our return on investment for the tax dollars that paid for all of the technology that the corporations are utilizing for their profits for free. We don't get anything back from that. UBI is economic justice. And that's the thing, is that we don't recognize economic rights yet. Basic income is that. We must recognize that in a world where life has a price, that we must extend access to what we need to survive. It's absolute bare minimum. We have to have access to that. If it is not okay to choke someone to death, it is not okay to pull and keep them from breathing and only provide the air back to them Great. if they do what you want or you work for them in ways that you are ever do So we just, after all these stages, here I am, and I just want us to keep going forward Think about what we can accomplish with a basic income and understand that basic income is ours. It is ours. Let's demand it. Let's make it happen. Because God damn it, it's the 21st century and it's about goddamn time. Yummy, 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 yummy. Uh, you.